in our pre-conversation about this interview, the three of us established that the purpose of this interview is to uh, educate, inform, and motivate. And this organization that we're going to talk about today is extremely important to the community, so it behooves you to be educated, and motivated, and informed on this interview. And I'm more than a little pleased today to have two distinguished guests who are involved in a certain organization that means a lot, whether we know it or not, it means a lot to all of us because it does a lot in the community and it embraces a lot of the things that are going on in the community and a lot of people don't know about it. This is a call to action. A, a call, call to, to action. action. I'm your host, Alex Havisham, and I'm very, very happy today to have with me uh, Ms. Deborah Tyler Horton, who's the yeah, state president, state, of director. The, state director of AARP. That's that phenomenal organization I was talking about. And Mr. Frank Tompkins, you know, my comrade and friend for a whole lot of years. He's the lead volunteer for AARP in the Central Georgia area. So we're going to begin with you there. Just talk a little bit generally about ARP. Oh, I'm happy to do that. Not so glad to hear you say that, Alex. ARP. You know, so many people think that we are the American Association of Retired. Um, folks, but AARP is now ARP. Okay, ARP. And that is because, you know, when AARP was founded over 60 years ago, um, the focus was for 60 plus. But today, ARP focuses on the family. So you can be 50 plus, or you can be 35 plus, and <laughs> AARP's materials and information is for everyone. And I'm happy to be here today on Veterans Day and to be able to have this conversation with you and your audience about ARP and what we're doing. Um, I want to say that I'm the state director for Georgia. And I say that specifically because there is a state office in every state across the country. Wow. So if you're listening to the show or you're sitting in the audience and you're visiting from California or from Virginia or any place, New York, there's an AARP state office in your state. Wow. Wow. So the things that I'm talking about today and what we're doing here in the beautiful Peach City, in the beautiful Peach State of Georgia, you will be able to get that information no matter where you live. Wow, wow. That's very, very important. And I'm happy that you're emphasizing that because it's important to the community. See, there are a lot of, and then oftentimes, I just thought about this, positive happenings and elements and organizations and programs in a community are not emphasized. The community doesn't know about them. And we we got ARP in Baker that's very active. Yes. Now, let me prove it to you. I have with me today Mr. <laughs> Fr Lewis Frank Tompkins, <laughs> who's the lead volunteer for ARP in, in, in Macon and, and surrounding areas. And uh, first of all, I want to thank both of you all, although this is the military and this is Veterans Day, but I want to thank you for serving. Thank you. Because like the military, ARP plays an important role you know, the military people defend us, but ARP helps us to live better lives and deal with a lot of issues in our community. So Frank, talk a little bit about your role and the kind of programs that we have in this community. Thank you, uh, AC. It's nice to be here. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say and express appreciation to our veterans, uh, both present and past, who uh, have served in our behalf. And they were true red, white, and blue. Uh, because they uh, afford us to be able to sit here as we are today, uh, unencumbered, so that we might be able to share our thoughts and express ourselves to the junkie public. I would like to say something about what Deborah said. If, if those same people like are in California or some other city, and you know you want to volunteer, well, you have a state office. If you want to start a chapter, if you will, or if you want to start a group, then that's your point of contact. AARP.org and you could just hook up and get all the information that you need to do those kinds of things so you could be relevant in your own community when you hear certain things about it. Uh, my, my role is uh, one where I am uh, really uh, supported by a number of individuals uh, who bring a, a repertoire of professions 
to the table. This enables us to be able to meet and talk about a lot of different areas. So we're not just like one dimensional. Uh, we have nurses, we have attorneys, we have educators, we have blue collar workers, we have counselors. So we got a good cross section of people. And uh, we are pretty consistent with uh, our membership. And when it's a lead volunteer, I look at it as maybe just coordinating the efforts that we put forth to may be of service. A lot of these people are retired, but as was said, you don't have to be retired to volunteer because a lot of people in a lot of organizations already volunteer and they are not retired. They're working everyday people, but then they, they have and recognize the fact that there is a need to serve others. And I was found to say, you know, the most important thing, you really haven't lived your life until you have served others. Uh, and uh, service is real important. And what we try to do is to bring forth those kinds of things and advocate for people to put things before them so they can, that will help them, that is, make decisions that will affect them for the rest of their lives. Okay. That's, what, that's what we try to do. That's very interesting. Now, uh, Deborah, if you would, and Frank, you can chime in whenever you get to talk specifically. You know, you know, I'm very interested in caregiving. You know, and I know that there are a lot of people out there, and I kind of feel for them. Because, you know, there are programs that, although there are programs designed to help people who need care, there are also programs designed to help people who give care right. because they are they are adversely affected and right. a lot of times we don't realize that. And since I realized that, I began to think about all the people that I know, bless their hearts, who take care of their kids or their parents or their That's neighbors right. or their, their, their grandmama or granddaddy, you know, every day. And to get up every day, well, just talk about caregiving and all. So, so, Alex, if I can, I want to back up and say one thing that Go you ahead. mentioned and both Frank mentioned, that is, and you talked about service. So I want to make sure that everyone knows AARP's motto is to serve, not to be served. Exactly. And that's so important. And in order to even do the caregiving work that you mentioned, in the Georgia State Office, there are 11 staff, and we cover the state of Georgia. We could not do the work that we do without the volunteers. So I want to just publicly say thank you to Frank and okay. all the volunteers that okay. are here making bid. Okay. The work that we do, the workshops we do, I think it's critical for people to understand that everything we do in the community is free. Wow. So there are many programs and organizations out there that say, we'll come do a caregiving session for you, a workshop session for you, but some honorarium or there's some cost. There's no cost. All of our materials are free, our presenters are free, our presentations are free, and you do not have to be a member of AARP exactly. to take advantage of any of them. Caregiving is a program that affects families. So, you know, we talked earlier about being 50 plus, being AARP, well, getting your AARP card, you know, and people can't say I'm 50 plus. <laughs> but the reality is, all of the information, especially caregiving, if you're a caregiver, and say, for example, mom or pop, grandma or grandpa gets sick, and we have to bring them into the household, and you're a working family, wow. and you have children in the home, how do you deal with all of that? So AARP has information and materials, not only hard copies, but online. You can go to aarp.org mm -hmm. slash caregivers and get a wealth of information, resources, where you can find support, facilities, agencies, how to have, can you imagine picking up a, a booklet that tells you how to have a conversation with your family? All of us pretty right. much have um, homecoming and, and family reunions, what a perfect time to talk about mom or dad aging right. and how are we gonna handle it. We have found that we lose our caregivers before the people that they're taking care of. And why is that? We're so busy taking care of our loved ones, we don't take care of ourselves. Now you said the caregiver sometimes precedes the caregiver. Yes. Wow. 
Wow. So you're busy taking mom or dad to the doctor, but you don't make the doctor's appointment <laughs> for yourself. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. That so we're so there to say, let's take care of the caregivers while they're taking care of wow. their loved ones. Wow. But that family conversation is critical. How does that little one understand why grandpa doesn't recognize him anymore because he's dealing with dementia? And mom and dad not talking to that child about it. So we want to be able to say we have the resources. If someone's listening today, I don't care who you are, you can contact AARP. We'll send you the book. Right. If you don't have access to the internet, right. all of our materials. You could call us and say we're having a church meeting, right, mm -hmm. Frank? Exactly. And Frank will come over and oh, do yeah. a caregiver yeah. workshop yeah, exactly. for you. That's awesome. So we're there to support. And we have a lot of information for our veterans. Right specific to veterans. Yeah, that's what I was wanted to get into because I know you all have a special initiative. And, and let me tell you, you all don't realize it, but AARP, let me, we cannot begin to talk uh, totally about all of the initiatives and the programs associated with AARP. So we're going to encourage you to go to AARP.org and just browse the website because mm -hmm, right. you'll learn much more. Now talk about today, Frank. Talk about what you all uh, did today in that initiative that uh, the well, state director is here to assist right. with. Well, we, we appreciate uh, Deborah and, and her husband coming down to be a part of something that we have had uh, in the works at the Macon Transit Authority for, for a period of time. And uh, as, as others are paying homage to our veterans, uh, MTA, uh, partnered with AARP. MTA? Making Transit Authority. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, and, and of course, uh, our, our CEO, Craig Ross, and, uh, and, uh, and Deborah uh, talked extensively this morning. But the essence of what we're trying to do is to provide a ride forever pass for veterans who served and were honorably discharged from the armed services and are 65 years and older. And of course, this is a free pass that will allow them to ride the Macon Transit Authority buses, fixed routes only, forever, forever. Now, this will enable them to do certain things. And uh, first of all, uh, we, we really consider ourselves an age-friendly community, one of the first that was recognized as such. So if you were coming here and you were a veteran and you had a way of living that you didn't have to worry about transportations in a car. So now you're a veteran, guess what? You have the advantage of riding the buses and making for on fixed routes, free of charge. All you have to do is go on 200 Cherry Street, which is the terminal station, by the way. When they say 200, don't worry about, where's 200 Cherry Street? <laughs> it's the end of Cherry Street, the terminal station, you know, the gym of Macon. Yeah. Uh, and uh, once you uh, go into the uh, terminal station, uh, if you uh, do not require uh, the elevator, then you just turn left and go up the stairs, ring the bell, and of course take with you a valid driver's license, your discharge papers, uh, DD-212, uh, I believe, or DD-215, and uh, present all the necessary paperwork, and uh, you'll be provide your pass. And you can get the bus back home free. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> and I, I've and, got a picture of it yes. right here. Um, and you can see the AARP logo on it, right. Alex, as we support this initiative. What's critical for us at AARP is to understand that it's not just Veterans Day that we celebrate and honor our veterans. Right. It's every day. Every day. Right. That's, that's exactly and right. this, to me, is an example of that support. Right for ongoing throughout the year. Right. Well, I'm sure you all will agree with me if we say it together, you know, like we're going to say thank you for your service. Yes. One, two, three. Thank, thank you, you for, for your, your service. service. Yeah, moving right along, yeah. moving right along. Let, let me uh, mention one, on, one, other, one other thing, uh, Alex. Uh, AC, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, this, this, this really is, is, is very important uh, for the listening audience because if you are a member of a, a church uh, in your announcements, it needs to be made known. Yes, sir. And because this is one of our main ways of communicating, 
And of course, I mean, this is something that everybody who is eligible needs to know about. Absolutely. I mean, this 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 is not, it's no small. It's not anything small. This yeah. is this is huge, it's because good. as Deborah said, this is every day, forever. It's right. not a special day that's recognized, but it's every day. Right forever. Right forever. You know, you know what Frank just said, which is critical, and that's why we're sitting here today. Absolutely. There's so many programs and services available. And people aren't taking advantage Manager. of them because exactly. they don't know about them. Right. So we're so grateful for you, for what you do for the community, and having this show. Because this is an opportunity for mm -hmm. people to hear. So this, we just released a major pass today that is free right. for veterans 65 plus. Now, if people don't know about it, those passes will sit. You can't win if you don't play. At the transit <laughs> of that age yeah. and not be utilized. And if and if, if they don't, if they don't have access to technology, pick up the phone and call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't say I don't have time. We find time to do anything we want. Absolutely. And this is critical for your well-being. They can go to get to the doctor. They can go to the a doctor's appointments. They can go just go hard. Go to the park. Yeah. We have our yeah, events. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. African speaking of parks, we know we're talking about veterans, and that's important. And we talked about caregiving, which is extremely important also. But let's talk a little bit about other programs, you know, because I know a lot of times people call my office, well, when I send out a flyer on an event, well, we want AARP, you know, <laughs> uh, health fair, uh, yeah. uh, other kind of community events. So talk about your involvement in other events, but you know, uh, the, the parades and the Martin Luther King march. You know, you see AARP there with a booth, you know, handing out water and doing other things. So talk about some of the other programs. You know, before you do that, though, talk a little bit about, uh, Deborah, if you would, or Frank, age-friendly. Talk a little bit about the age-friendly initiative that uh, AARP is a part of. So there's so much under the age-friendly umbrella, which includes our communities at large. And, and because Make and Bib has been the lead, I mean, the lead in the country in becoming an age-friendly city, I mean, I can't say enough about right. it. You all set the stage. You all were the model for the rest of the country on how we can move forward right. in making communities age-friendly. That includes your parks. That includes your sidewalks. That includes all of those things that will allow you to age in place. So if, you know, Alex, you've been living in that house, and as, as we get older together, um, you would say, I want to stay in my community. Mm -hmm. So I want my community to be able to grow and develop with me. That means, is there a sidewalk so that you can walk and feel comfortable in that community? That's a partnership with the city. So all of these partnerships and engagements are critical on how we move forward. You want to park where it's Yes, the kids can swing, but also there's some uh, uh, some exercise that a 50 plus can do, you right. know? I mean, yeah. we're all aging right. together. Right. We also want to be able to go to a grocery store. Maybe you need to be, have access to fresh produce and community markets, and you don't want to have to go an hour, hour and a half to get there. And if those things aren't in your community, that's where the partnerships come into. We have to work together to mm -hmm. ensure that our communities are livable, age-friendly, so that we can age in place. Now I understand what that lady told me 50 years ago. 50 years ago. Yeah, she said, just keep living. Just keep living. I love it. Uh, just keep living. I understand and, that. And to, and to add to what Deborah was saying, uh, she, she's really talking about advocacy for people who live in communities. Uh, and one of our main initiatives right now has to do with lowering the prices of prescription drugs. And of course, uh, we partner with various organizations, churches, uh, like what Macon, if you will, is one where we just partnered with. We just did a symposium at uh, St. Paul Church uh, to talk about caregiving. We're doing one on the 14th uh, for a NACO Watch program. Uh, we did some with Navison Health. We partner with certain organizations on a yearly basis. Either we contact them or they contact us to make sure that we have the latest of what's available because a lot of people will come to a venue that don't necessarily listen to the news or they don't have technology. But when, when churches transport people to a venue that they're having, 
that's a part of their congregation and in the community, then they are made aware of what's available because we have the latest of everything you need. And of course, you do know that the cost of prescription drugs, which you will find out with that situation you have, sir, <laughs> have gone up. Don't tell, don't, 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 don't tell everybody about back hurt, man. And, and the thing about it is that a, a person has to make a choice now between medication, the main medication, something that's a facsimile of it, paying a bill, eating, and feeding our family. So now what's that person going to do? The medication is going to go lacking, or they're going to cut it in half. So now they're getting half of what they need, or they're getting a generic that's not as potent. Right. And the prices, and it's not going to change unless we advocate for right. a lot of people. Right. But the people who can make a difference need to contact that congressman. Right. And see, when you come to AARP's table, there's a form for you to sign, yes. and they're not going to call you, and we're not either. Yeah. We're going to send those petitions in. Right. I just gave Deborah a whole shoebox full of petitions that we have had signed at the various venues and the fairs that we have attended. Uh, so yeah, now, you know. now, Alex, now let me tell you what's powerful about this. Because, see, I can just sit here and be quiet. Right? Yeah. But our volunteers are trained yeah. to be able to speak on the programs and the services mm -hmm. that are available. So if you have listening, now I'm going to look right straight at the camera. Yeah. <laughs> if you are out there and you are retired, or maybe you're not retired, and you're looking for something to do, Come and volunteer with AARP. Sure. We open our doors for volunteers. We'll train you. We'll give you the information. We'll cover your mileage and we'll make sure you have a wonderful wow. lunch. We'll take good care of you. Wow. But then you can be an advocate in your community right. for yourself. Right. And we'll give you the materials and the training to do it. Wow. And that's a program that's called CEVO that we have just had two persons be trained out west where all of our members, as Deborah said, were trained. They are called community volunteers. It's a community volunteer program called C Vote. And as Deborah said, you as a member of our group can have uh, an event at your church. But if it becomes a citywide, then it's a whole different ball game. But it, you could be a a committee of one in your church right. at, in a senior ministry to talk right. about something that right. you feel is of import right. to that community. You know what? I teach in the prison system. And I explained to those guys, some of them getting out of, been incarcerated for 30 years. I emphasized to them that there are resources available in the community to help with almost any kind of problem right. that one may have. Yeah. And that's so true for, for all, mm -hmm. because you all provide so many resources to deal with community problems or initiatives. That, that 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 one way or the other everybody needs you know now talk a little bit about some other programs that we have a mention because you know like fraud watch I want to talk about yeah, fraud. Yeah, yeah yeah go ahead I mean there's so many it is so that's that. when I really want to thank you I, I wanted to put in there Georgia is in the top 10 in the country on fraud that means people are being taken advantage of every day so there are new scams every day. So what AARP lets you know what scams are out there. Wow. So let me give you an example of one. So say you're sitting home and you get a call saying your grandchild is in trouble and they need you to send them $10,000 to get them out of jail. And people react, they hear grandchild and what'll happen is you might say, are you talking about James? And they go, yes, we're talking about James. <laughs> yeah, exactly. we, they, he's in trouble, and we need you to come. If you need to get this money immediately, I cannot tell you how many people have fallen oh, for that. Scheme. Wow. They run to the bank to get the money to get it there. So recently, this happened in Atlanta. This happened to a family. And they, so as they're in the bank, they couldn't get all the money. So they, they started panicking. They said, they needed 8,000, but they only had 7,000 available. So they said they were gonna call the grandson's friend, talk to him and say, do you know what happened? And when they called me, they said, sit right here next to me. <laughs> yeah. And you know how they felt, very yeah. small. Yeah. Yeah. This is happening every day. I want our listeners to know, if somebody calls you and says that the IRS 
is after you right. and give them your social security number. Trust me, if you don't, if nothing else I said today, the IRS will never call your house and ask you for your social security wow. number. The IRS is not going to call you. They don't have time to call you. I know. I know that. So the, these kind of scams yeah, yeah. are people. We have stories where people have been taken for thousands and thousands. Okay, we're getting short on time, so let's do okay. this. Let's enumerate as best we can. Okay. All of the programs that AARP is involved in, all the initiatives that you can think of. So really quickly, caregiving, caregiving financial security, financial security, fraud, fraud, we have special programs for veterans, veterans, and then what else? Discounts, what discounts, discounts, discounts. For membership. but volunteerism. And the volunteerism, age-friendly, age-friendly, age livable community. Yes, community. yes. Well, that is so important. Now, let me tell you something. What we hope that we've done with this conversation is to whet your appetite, if that's a word, Frank majored in English, well, to make you, to make you desirous of learning more information. I'm so appreciative to Louis Frank Tompkins, who's the lead volunteer for, for Macon, yeah. for his service. And he's a volunteer. And he spends a lot of time volunteering. And he needs some help. And you can assist him by volunteering also. Of course, the state director, Ms. Deborah Horton, who goes all over the state, you know. She's leaving another city, coming through Macon now, you know, to be a part of this. But AARP needs you. AARP can help you. AARP can assist you with any kind of initiative, whether you're an individual, an organization, a government, a fraternity, a sorority, or what have you. So if you need to learn more information, what should they do? They can go to www.aarp.org. You can reach out right here in Macon. It's exactly. Lewis Frank Tompkins at cox.net or 478-747-3570. Once again, Lewis F. Tompkins at cox.net, no H. Four seven oh seven four seven eight seven four seven three five seven zero. We look forward to hearing from you. AARP doors are open. Uh, just reach out. In the website has all the information we talked about and more, including the number for the state including office. Including the number for the state office. Right. Yes. This is a call to action. A, a call, call to action. action. I'm your host, Alex Harris. I'm having an interview. Mr. Lewis F. Tompkins with Dr. H. D. O. M. P. You know, who's the lead volunteer for, for Macon, and also Ms. Deborah Tyler Horton, who's the state director for ARP. And again, I want to publicly thank you all and AARP for all that it does in the community and encourage you to learn more, do more, be about more. And if you're interested, you send it home board then I strongly suggest that you gain more information about this organization because they will help you and they will appreciate your involvement. I'm your host, Alex Habersham, thanking them again at www.aarp.org. That's correct. Have a great day.